Good morning, everyone. This is Mike Kerr from The Recon Report. Here it is, Monday morning, August 24th. Before we get started today, please subscribe to this channel and click the bell so you're notified when we put out new editions of The Recon Report, which we do our best to do daily. Now listen, it's a busy week. The Republican National Convention starts today where Donald Trump, of course, will be nominated as the candidate for president for the Republican Party this year. Vice President Mike Pence starts it all off and it is supposed to be an explosive convention with lots of new stuff. It's a rally point for the Republicans. Tune in, let us know what you think of it. We will be reporting on that all week long. To start off today, let's just take a look. So, the House passes a bill bolstering the Postal Service, and they're going to send them $25 billion. Did you catch that? With a B. $25 billion to kind of reinvent the Postal Service here. We've had lots of problems. We talked about it on Friday in the recon report. Uh, the post office has backed up mail. They have spoiled goods there, fruit, meats, all kinds of stuff. And this $25 billion is supposed to get that back in gear and, of course, make it so that we can do mail-in voting. Now, again, that right there is the liberals trying to mess up our election process. So hopefully this 25 billion will do something for that. But let's also hope that check doesn't get lost in the mail. Now, moving on, Tennessee. This is pretty interesting. Tennessee adopted a new law that could restrict the rights of some of its residents to vote. Tennessee protesters could now lose their right to vote under a new law that Governor Bill Lee put into effect without much fanfare at all. And it seems that what they're doing is protesters who camp out on state property are subject to a fine punishable, it's a felony. He's made it a felony now. It, they're, it's punishable by charges of up to six years in prison, six years. And the felons are automatically stripped of their right to vote. So Tennessee, I, I kind of got to give it to them. Now, they're not looking to put down peaceful protests. They're not saying you don't have the right to free speech. What they're saying is, if you behave like these lunatics that are out there now in Portland, in Seattle and around the country, and you know who I'm talking about, of course, it's BLM, Black Lives Matters. You see these anarchists out there destroying property, destroying police vehicles, causing riots. Well, what Tennessee's done is they've said enough is enough. And so they're going to lock these people up, which is the way it should be. These are not peaceful protesters and they'll lose their right to vote, which is the way it should be. You know, and it's, it's just really, really interesting to me that the civil rights people, you know, the ACLU, uh, they're out there and they're saying that, it, you know, this law that goes into effect immediately, they're outraged. Of course they're outraged. They're saying that this is Tennessee's latest attempt to repress voting ahead of the elections. The racial motivation, the underlying tone, according to the ACLU, is directly targeted at Black Lives Matters. And it's a backlash for what these people are doing to protest their cause. Well, of course it is, and it should be. So, their organization, ACLU, is going after Tennessee and they're saying that they're gonna do a sweeping lawsuit to shut this down. Well, I say good on you, Tennessee, good on you. Now, another report from Brazil, of all places, 
says that sociopaths are most likely to refuse wearing a mask during the COVID-19 crisis. They actually did a study. I don't know how much money they spent on it, but they did a study and found that people who don't want to wear a mask have sociopathic tendencies. Well, there you go, folks. Someone's throwing labels at us once again. It should be your right whether you wear a mask or you don't wear a mask. I'm not saying if you don't wear a mask, go run around hugging people in the grocery stores like some idiot at Walmart did, you know, saying, I have the COVID virus, let me give you a hug. I'm not saying that. I'm saying you have the right to decide your own health care. And if you do not want to wear a mask, don't wear a mask. But also social distance, don't go around people that are at risk, the elderly, the very young. Just be an adult and pay attention to what you're doing in your environment and your surroundings. Now, this one, this story, this is maybe my favorite this morning. Joe Biden. Way to go, Joe. Got nailed for plagiarism. They're not saying that he actually did it. Of course they're not. But he, after he did his acceptance speech, viewers from Canada are claiming that it was suspiciously similar to those statements written by late Canadian politician Jack Layton. Several, several Canadian viewers chimed in and said that Biden appeared to mimic words written by the new Democratic Party leader in 2011. The Biden campaign has yet to address this. They, they're not talking about it, but catch this. They invested $4,200 in an anti play plagiarism software program. Okay, why do you need a software program if you're Joe Biden to know if you're plagiarizing something or not? That's kind of like saying, uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a program to detect whether I am an adulterer or not. I mean, look, you either know or you don't know. Biden either knows or he doesn't know. Layton was the leader of the left-wing New Democratic Party from 2003 until his death in 2011. Prior to the passing, his passing at 61, he penned a letter which read in part, love is better than anger, hope is better than fear, optimism is better than despair. Sounds kind of familiar if you, if you watched I mean, and God bless you if you did, but if you watch Joe and his crew do their thing, uh, you saw that. And I'm telling you, if you watch it again, you're going to see it's eerily similar to Leighton's speech. So Joe, get your own material, brother. Just get your own stuff. Now, okay, <clears throat> this story, uh, it just totally confused me. A, tan, a transgender teenager has successfully sued their high school after being denied use of the men's bathroom at age 14, which it says made it feel small, nervous, and terrified. Well, it seems that this being started life as a female and decided she wanted to be a male. Now it took me a while reading this article to figure that all out, but Drew Adams, which is the name that this person goes by now, is now 19 and from Tallahassee, Florida. To, this guy took action against St. John's County School District in 2017 after he was forced to use either the girl's bathroom or a single stall neutral bathroom. Okay, when I went to school, there was the boy's bathroom and there was the girl's bathroom. There wasn't a gender neutral bathroom. I mean, you, you wanna know why this generation is so confused? I mean, right there, 
you have the, the, the start of it. This teenager started the legal process at age 16 and has spent three years engaged in what they say is a grueling battle to allow transgender students to use toilets which match their general or gender identity. He told of how being denied use of the male toilets at age 14 made him feel small, nervous, and terrified, as if he'd done something wrong for wanting to use the men's bathroom. Okay, look it. He did do something wrong. He was born a girl. And now he wants to use the guy's bathroom. I, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm nuts, but I'm saying there's something wrong with that. Apparently, he, as he goes by now, had gone through some uh, procedures, hormone treatment and things like that, and some plastic surgery to have male parts. And again, he says it made him feel small, nervous, and terrified. Uh, you know, maybe you need to talk to your plastic surgeon about that, Drew. You know, I mean, it's, it's just crazy to see that this is what goes on today and that this guy actually is going to get a settlement from the school district for this. You know, when your kids go to school today, they shouldn't have to decide where they go to the bathroom. It should be simple. You're either a guy or you're a girl. If you're a transgender and they have this, you know, uh, gender, gender neutral bathroom, use the general neutral bathroom. Why do you have to go in one where you really are not supposed to be? But that's where we are in America today. And that's what we all need to stand up to. Uh, now, this is rather frightening and we're going to uh, go, go back to uh, Tennessee. Okay, folks, Tennessee parents have been forced to sign a waiver, and this waiver that they have to sign says that they will not eavesdrop on their children's online lessons. So get the picture here. Get the picture here. What the liberals want to do is they want to teach our kids whatever they want to teach them, and as parents, they don't want us involved. They don't want to see what, we're, what they're teaching them. We've already seen that some of the BLM protesters that have been arrested out there are educators. They are teachers. They are teaching our children what, you know, these young minds that are like, they're, they're like clay. I mean, they're molding them into this socialist communist agenda. And now what they want to do is push parents out. They don't want the parents to be involved in it. It's wrong. It shouldn't be happening. And you need to stand up to any school district, anybody that says, as a parent, you can't watch what's going on on your child's online classes. Or if it's an in-person class, why can't you go in once in a while and just monitor it? It's your child, it's your child's education. You should be able to do it. Best solution here, folks, home, school, your kids. Teach them the truth about America. Don't let them be corrupted by what the underlying tone is here in education. So we're gonna go on from that and look at China. China says it began public use of a COVID vaccine a month ago, bypassing clinical trials. No big surprise there. But they're saying that they were first before Russia, that they have the civilian rollout three weeks earlier than Russia's rollout, where neither vaccine, Russia or China, had passed any clinical trials. So, I mean, it's just like, let's do a clinical trial on the whole population. You know, they have been dosing medical workers, state-owned enterprise employees with the experimental vaccine in late July under urgent use protocols. So, you know, that's what we're seeing going on globally. I mean, the panic behind COVID-19 that they're throwing out medicines here. And you'll see that in Russia, there was a story 
that they've come up with another vaccine that counteracts the side effects of the first vaccine. Now, what's going to happen here in the States is we rush to come up with a vaccine. The president announced over the weekend that we have a new somewhat of a treatment based on uh, antibodies from people who have had the vaccine. And we're going to look at that this week and we're going to see where that all goes. But you know, as we rush into all this stuff, does the cure create more harm than the virus? We don't know yet. We're gonna to have to wait and see. Now let's go back to Black Lives Matters. In Portland, the BLM revolutionaries, as they call themselves, marched into the suburbs where they burned American flags, of course, and hopefully we can make that a crime. Uh, and they, they threw poop at people and demanded that they have shelter. And they drug this guillotine through and they assassinated, in their words, a giant teddy bear. A giant teddy bear? I mean, really? And, and this is what they do. Then they moved on and they rioted and they you know, they burned down police cars, they threw rocks at the police, they threw their poo bags at the police. You know, this is what they do. Now, the police in that area in a separate incident over the weekend, they didn't have enough guys on the police force to break up this protest where the, uh, the Black Lives Matters people and then the other side of the fence started to get into a fight. So uh, those that oppose what Black Lives Matter, and, he, and it just went crazy. They just, they just let them brawl. They let them fight it out. Guns were flashed. I mean, bottles were thrown. I'm telling you, it's Mad Max. That's what's going on up there. When, as we mentioned last week, when do we reach the time? when we say enough is enough and just send in the military and just stop the madness. We need to stop the madness. Now, the next story that we're gonna look at is something that you should be paying attention to, and that is the move to become a cashless society. Now, we all hear about a cashless society, but what is a cashless society really? It is exactly what it sounds like. You will not be allowed to use cash anywhere. You won't be able to pay for anything in cash. All the things that you do, your kids that do odd jobs on the weekend, the cash will be worthless. You work at a restaurant, your tips are worthless. They're all that stuff is going to be done cashless. Okay, so what does that mean? It means it's very easy to track the movement of any transaction anywhere in the country. Cash would no longer be legal tender. So you couldn't pay your bills with it. You couldn't spend it in any way. I mean, it'd be a worthless piece of paper. But you know, that's minor because we all use our debit cards and our credit cards now as we live in society. It's just a convenience. But when you go completely cashless, it means that every dime you bring in or spend is tracked and recorded. There'll be absolutely no financial privacy. Many people have savings scattered around the house. People keep cash in jars under their mat mattresses for an emergency during a bank holiday. So you have money. I mean, who knows, right? I mean, maybe you don't trust the banks, which, uh, you know, might not be a bad idea. But in a cashless society, that's worthless. You know, when, when all of this happens, and, and this goes on, look at the other countries that have fallen apart. I mean, like in, in Greece, look at what's happened, okay? You take a look at that and you think, what if that happened here in the United States? So what I'm saying is, fight the cashless society, folks, fight it. And you know, if you find a place, like I believe it's Five Guys now, and don't quote me, look that up, Google it, is now not accepting cash. You know what? Don't go there. Don't eat their burgers. The best 
way that you have to protest against the cashless society, against being forced by a business to wear a mask, is to not spend any money there. That's your best weapon. Don't go there. Don't go get a hamburger because you're hungry out of convenience to a place that won't take cash. Go down to the street to someone who still does it the American way and takes cash. So think about that, folks. Study up on it more. We're going to do some more stories on this cashless society and what it actually means. We're going to interview somebody that's really into it and can give you an explanation of all the things that can happen if we don't stand up against that. Uh, Kelly Ann Conway is gone. She resigned this morning. Now, I am not saying, but I'm just saying I'm not disappointed in that. I mean, her uh, daughter has accused her mom of physical abuse and putting on a show after she sensationally quit her job to spend time with the family. I don't know, Kellyanne, might be too late with your daughter who's 15, uh, you know, that she's, this 15 year old girl was trying to emancipate herself from her parents. Now, you know, lots of young kids do that. Some do it so they can get married. I mean, they just, lots of kids do that. But all this stuff coming out is a little disheartening, you know. Uh, now, Kellyanne tweeted yesterday that she made this decision uh, because she wants to stay at home and get out of the drama. She's leaving the White House gratefully and humbly. She says that she wants to stay at home and she wants for now and for her beloved children for it to be less drama and more mama. Well, I applaud you for that. Maybe a little late in the equation when your own daughter says that she wanted to emancipate because of years of childhood trauma and abuse. So I don't know where this story is going to go as we dig into it. You know, lots of mud being slung around out there. And we're just going to have to see what happens. And we'll continue to follow it uh, as we go along. Now, leave it to the Israelis, okay? In Israel, you know, they're tracking, uh, they have the COVID tracking going on. And in, in Israel, what, what the Israeli citizens have done, Reuters reports that in Jerus Jerusalem, uh, they have the cell phone surveillance for coronavirus contact tracing. And what they've done the Israelis have figured out how to overcome this. What they do is they turn their phones on airplane mode or they use burner, for, burner phones, SIM cards instead. Not a bad idea. You know, they wanna track you, that's the way to do it. Your cell phone is like having a collar around your neck and they know where you are all the time. Don't trust just turning location services off. If you don't wanna be tracked, you wanna put on that airplane mode, or you want to use a burner phone. Otherwise, they're going to be able to track you. Now, Israel, in Israel, what's happening there is there's an uproar in the government where the communication minister, and I'm not going to try and pronounce his name, said that while those actions of people doing that are not illegal, although they're anecdotal evidence, for their prevalence, that they draw remonst basically, they irritate the heck out of the government because the government can't track them. Now, that, folks, is what's going to happen here in the States if we're not careful. They want to track you. They want to know where you are. Our lovely, lovely, lovely Google Facebook folks were putting out a thing, join this tracking program, join this Put your information in here so we know where the coronavirus is going. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's like people, I say that Ancestry.com stuff, sending your DNA into some weird place. You don't know where that's going. Why would you want your DNA out there anywhere? Why would you want that? 
So listen, those are the stories we're following today. We'll be following more stories this week, trying to bring you information that you can go and dig into further. I don't claim to have all the answers. I don't claim to have the solutions. And I will never claim to know the dates. So look into it for yourself. Be educated, be aware, and be on the lookout for things to come. We'll see you tomorrow on another edition of the Recon Report.